This is Mikey Borup for PremiumBeat.com, and in this After Effects course, you will learn the basics to advanced features of After Effects. Interface, shape layers, motion tracking, compositing, and more. During these tutorials, feel free to pause, rewind, and ask questions. I will be using After Effects CC version 12.2, but most of the techniques learned can be used in older versions. In this video, we will cover everything about shape layers can get a little bit complicated, so let's fire up After Effects and get started. So here I am in After Effects, and I've already got a composition here, it's called Shape Layers. And I'm really excited for this because I absolutely love shape layers. There's so much you can do, um, but they're also very confusing sometimes. You can get really lost inside of shape layer. There's a whole world within a shape layer. So let me show you how to make just a first basic shape layer. There's two ways to do this. You can use one of these tools, or you can use a pen tool. I'm going to use one of these tools and let's just create a rectangle. And here I am, I just created a shape. And what happened is I didn't have anything highlighted and it created a new shape. Now you've used this before to do masking with, but if I don't have a layer highlighted, it'll create a shape. Now if I do have a layer there, um, let me just hide this layer and I'll delete it, I'll make a new one. Let me bring in a new solid. If I have this layer highlighted and I use this, well, then it's going to create a mask. And it's not a shape, it's a mask. But if I don't have that layer selected, say I've deselected it, I use this, it's going to create a shape. And you can know it's going to be a shape versus a mask because when you're in a shape tool, up here it says fill and stroke. If I have it highlighted, it's in mask tool and I don't have that. See, fill and stroke. So I come in here, I can even change the color of these have a big thick stroke on it, and then when I make my shape, that's going to be represented. Let's go ahead and delete that solid behind there. Now there's going to be some options up here to, for your shape layer, but also down here there's content. See there's this add, and there's this add there. And so this is going to be a lot like a text layer where you can add different things, and there's a whole kind of a world in here, but this is a lot bigger in shape layers than it is in text layers. So let's kind of see what we can do with some text layers. I've got this just basic text layer and I can come in here and here's the fill. I can change the opacity of the fill by itself. There's the stroke. I can change the opacity of the stroke by itself. Really cool. Let's focus on the fill for a little bit. I can change the color. Let's bring the opacity back up or I can just right here next to fill, there's the eyeball. I can turn it off completely so it's transparent. Okay, let's take a look at the stroke. There's a lot more options with the stroke. So let's come here to color. We'll leave it there, opacity there. We can change the width. And let's uh, look at some of these other options. We can look at the line join. So we can come here, it's set at miter join. Go to round, you can see it rounds around the edge bevel, kind of just cuts it on the edge. Now say we want to make this dashes. Right here it says dashes, and if I click on this triangle like you're used to, you click on that and it shows more options, it doesn't show anything. But there's this plus here, and this is a little bit confusing because what does this mean? So I hit plus, and then now it's dashes, right? Let's actually go back to this and make this a miter joint. And I can adjust the amount of dashes. That's cool and the offset, but if I hit plus again, then it gives me this new option for gap. So I can have a big gap between the dashes, and I can change the size of the dashes. So I'm sure you can see already how things can get start to get fairly confusing with uh, shape layers but you can see the, you know, what you can do. So I can come in here, I can just animate the offset. And you got that kind of a look. Go ahead and turn that off. Let's actually just turn the stroke off completely. Now, let's do a little bit more. The shape layer itself has its own transform right here. So I can transform the position of the shape layer. 
but I can also transform the position of the shape within the shape layer. So this has its own transform as well. And the reason for that is because a single shape layer ha can have multiple shapes. So if I come in here, click on the shape layer, and let's bring up, say, a star tool. This now, right here, I've got the rectangle and the polystar. And so this polystar is going to have its own transform settings within the shape layer. So it's kind of like having a group or a pre-composition. And I can scale that and do all the same things I would normally, but just to them individually inside of the shape layer. Now, if I have this scaled up really big, there's some other things I can do. So let's go to Add. And I'm going to add a Merge Paths. And what it's going to do is it's going to merge these paths, the polystar and the rectangle. And if I come in here, right now it's set to Add. If I set to Subtract, you can see it's going to subtract the, the rectangle out of that. Intersect is where they intersect. Exclude intersection, it's going to look like that. Merge is going to, they're going to be both together. So that's the merge paths. And you can see this is kind of really cool. You can do some cool stuff with this. So let's go down to intersect. And what I can do now is I can come into my polystar and I can change the position of this. And you can see how cool, how you can do some cool effects just all within the shape layer. This is track mats all within the shape layer. So let's go ahead and let's delete this merge paths and let's delete the rectangle. Let's just have the star. If we look into the star, let's come in and let's bring the scale down. Let's zero out the position. And let's look at some of the options. So up in the polystar path, if I come in here, there's type, there's star, polygon. I can also change the amount of points. I can change the position here. So this is where things get really confusing because now this has its own position. And there's also the position right here. And there's also the position right here. So you always need to know what you're doing. And sometimes you want to move this position. Sometimes you want to move the other position. It just depends. See, if I move this one, then when I come down and do a rotation down here, it's going to rotate around that. So it just depends on what you need to do. Because this position doesn't have its own anchor point. It's literally just the position of the shape itself. There's no anchor point. There's no nothing to it. So I can also rotate this here. Um, let's change. We can change the some of the inner radius. We can do a shape like this. Let's scale this whole thing up. And this is starting to look like maybe like a sticker or something. So let's come into the fill. Let's change the color of this. Let's go into the stroke. And now it's kind of like got a like a sticker, like congratulations, and they stick it on someone's paper. So, and then we can also add some roundness to these shapes. So lots of cool stuff you can do. Now let's let's do some more. So I've got this poly star and let's add another shape to this. So I'm going to just come up here and I'm going to add a rounded rectangle. And I put it right there in the middle. I'm going to come into the shape, go into the fill. Let's change the color so it shows up. And what I have is now I've got this rectangle and this poly star, and I can put them in a group. So if I click on contents and go to add, and there's all sorts of things here. Let's add a group. And I'm going to take both of those, highlight them, stick it right into that group. So now this group, is it's like a pre-comp. 
It's all in one thing. And I can take this group and let's add some more things to it. I can add a stroke to the group. You know, so if within this group, I can come in to this rectangle. Let's transform this. And there's a whole stroke around everything as a whole. That's kind of cool. So let me, let's delete these. Let's start a brand new shape layer. And let's do a rounded ellipse. And what I want to show you is some other of these options. So let's come in, stroke, let's bring the stroke down. Okay. I'm going to just highlight the rectangle and come over to add. And you can see down here, there's also offset paths, pucker and bloat, repeater, round corners, trim pass, twist. Let's take a look at some of these. Let's start at the bottom, zigzags. It is going to take the edge and it's going to zigzag it. So some cool stuff you can do with this, creating some neat shapes. Make it smooth. Okay, let's go ahead and delete that. Wiggle transform. This is just a wiggler. but it's got its own transform. So it's a wiggler built in to the shape layers. That's pretty cool. A lot of cool stuff you can do there. And again, like with everything, you need to get in here. You need to experience this. You need to just test out all these things. I'm going to show you as much as I can, but there's so much to this. Uh, we can do wiggle paths. And you can see what that's doing. It's taking this path and it's wiggling it, making it look kind of all crazy. And I can change the size, detail, the speed, all sorts of cool stuff. Let's go ahead and delete that. Twist is going to twist it up. And of course, these are all keyframable. So I can do like a uh, hit the angle right there. Let's bring this to the beginning. Have this at zero. Move forward in time. Keyframe it, move back a little bit. And I'm just moving forward and keyframing it just a little bit. And as we play through this, you got this kind of this look. Let's go ahead and delete that. Let's go back into add. Trim paths. This is one of my favorites. And I come in here and it's going to trim it like it's just cutting it out. And you can see just like the other range selectors and in, in like the text layers and things like that, I have a start and an end. You can also offset the whole thing. You can do some really cool animations with this. So that's trim paths. Let's go back in here. Round corners. Now this already has rounded corners. So that's not going to do anything, but if I bring in a non-rounded rectangle and round the corners, you can see it's going to round it. Or you can also do the same thing to, you know, a star, things like that. Now, like pucker and bloat, you can see what this does. that kind of stuff. Offset paths. Let's 
It's going to be like that, so you can make it bigger or smaller. Now, what I want to show you is the repeater. And what the repeater does is it's, you know, it's repeating the shape. So I come in here, and it automatically made three copies. If I come into offset, I can change where those are at. But let's come into the repeater transform. And let's bring the scale down and the position. I can kind of adjust where these are at. And then what I can do is just crank up the copies. And I've got this repeating. I can also come in here to rotate, and you can see how it just rotates it throughout the repeater. Really kind of a cool thing. You can create some really interesting um, effects this way. Now if you really want to get crazy, you can do two repeaters. So I've got the one repeater. I'm going to come back in here and add another repeater. Click on Contents, go to Repeater, and now I'm repeating the repeater. So we can come in here scale this down a little bit and you can see how you can get lost inside of shape layers rather easily just all the different things it can do pretty cool let's maybe add some more Do some rotations. And let's do some offset. And you can see all the cool stuff you can do. Now, I really like shape layers. I tend to use shape layers more than just a solid with a mask. Just because of all the stuff you can do with shape layers. Now, there is... Now the downsides with doing that though is things tend to get really complicated. There's lots of different layers and groups and things like that. So just be careful um, not to get lost inside the shape layer. But the important thing is to just jump in here and just experiment with all of this stuff you can do. You'll be surprised about how many cool things you can do inside of a shape layer. All within one layer. And then when it's just one layer, I can add effects to this layer by itself. So I can come up to your effects. I can add, you know, a fast blur just to this layer. And it's going to blur it all. If it was multiple shapes, then it gets kind of complicated. If I'm doing solids and masking, then it's going to get complicated. But the fact that I can do everything all within one layer is really nice. And it cuts down on all the complications and it makes your project a lot more organized. So that's it for this lesson. Thank you for watching and participating in this course. Feel free to comment and share this video with others. In our next video, we'll be talking about working with footage, color correction, speed changes, and noise reduction. Again, this is Mikey Bort for PremiumBeat.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.